Well, the first point I suppose to make is that the battle was in fact a defeat. It's one of those oddities that um, this battle, which the Spartans themselves made a big deal of, but has become associated in the popular mind, thanks to movies, but not only movies, with Spartan achievement of a positive kind, actually was a defeat. Now, it was an inevitable defeat. The Persians' huge army, multi-ethnic, for various reasons, decided in the early 5th century they wanted to extend their empire to the west, to include in it what is now, what was then, mainland Greece. And that means mainly taking on Athens and Sparta. But there were altogether something like 700 different Greek political communities, not just two, in the area that the Persians wanted to advance, to conquer, to add to their empire. However, if there was to be any resistance at all, it was absolutely crucial that Athens, the most powerful city by sea, and Sparta, the most powerful Greek city by land, should unite. Sparta, because of its Peloponnesian League alliance, was more powerful than Athens, and it was the senior partner in the alliance which was formed in the late 480s to resist the uh, Persian invasion. And so this is the context in which the first resistance, the first actual encounter of what we call the Greco-Persian Wars took place at Thermopylae because if you're an army coming down from the north, as the Persian army was, from Macedonia through Thessaly, into central Greece and then to Athens, you have to go through the pass of Thermopylae. One kilometre long, much closer to the sea then than it is today because there's been various uh, earth movements since 480 BC. So the extraordinary first thing about the battle is that the Spartans took the lead in ensuring that there was a resistance when many Greek cities were defeatist, some actually went over to the Persian side because they were confident that the Persians would win and they didn't want to be on the losing side and punished if they lost. So the fact that Sparta took the lead, sent one of its two kings, Leonidas, is in itself remarkable. Then what about the actual um, so-called battle? Well, it was a series of battles. Over a week, the Persians camped outside the western end of the pass and waited for the Spartans and their allies. There were about six to 7,000, not just the 300 um, bodyguard of Leonidas. There were more Greeks than just that. Waited for them to surrender, and they didn't. And so after three days, the fighting began. It went on for another three days, and it was on the third day, through treachery as well as through sheer numbers, the Persians did eventually win. And so the sacrifice which the Spartans in particular made, together with some of their allies, Greek allies, that was the first thing that um, stood out when other Greeks were rather pathetically uh, rolling over, certainly not resisting. Um, the Spartans, the Athenians and their allies resisted. The fleet was stationed not far away from Thermopylae. It's very important to remember the Persian army is coming down by land. The Persian fleet is coming down by sea. They have to be resisted at sea as well as on land. So there's a combined operation between Thermopylae and a place called Artemision at the very north of the island of Euboea. And the combination has the effect of holding up the Persians and inflicting on them severe casualties and therefore raising morale. And it's as a morale victory that Thermopylae was used by the Spartans and other Greeks. It was in practical terms uh, a physical defeat.